Um, there's several ways to show that we need the Old Testament. But I'm, I've chose, well, not I've chose, but the Lord has shown me to use these scriptures. But before we start reading that part in John, chapter 5, verse 39. Now, if, if you notice, on each of these verses that I give you, I leave a little room there for you to write notes. Verse 39 says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. The scriptures don't save us. The scriptures testify of Jesus, who does save us. So this is this Bible right here. It's just a book, leather, paper. I don't worship this Bible. But I do worship the one who wrote this Bible. Amen? The Bible plainly says it was inspired by the Holy Spirit to be written. So this book doesn't save us. Just the same as these buildings, these church buildings, with the stained glass windows, the temp, the crosses, and all, all that is just religious church stuff. Do you hear me? Yeah. This is all church religious stuff. None of that saves us. All right? This, the Word of God, the Scriptures, point to Jesus. That's what saves us. The purpose of the Scriptures is so God can reveal Himself to us. How are we going to know who God is? This is the only way through the scriptures. We've got to search the scriptures. This is the only way we're going to find out who our Father is and what He wants from us. We need to, we need to search the scriptures. Uh, you have a lot of Christians, Christians, I'm not talking about lost people, I'm talking about Christians who don't read this. They don't read the Word of God. They go to church and depend on a preacher or a teacher to teach them. A man. God says, search the scriptures. Who is he talking to right here? He's talking to us. Search the scriptures. Me? I'm a normal Christian. You, you think this is a, I have a special gift here? This is, I don't have a special gift. I'm just being a Christian. I search the scriptures. Because God told me to. And I want to know. Because there's a lot of wolves out there, which I've told you many times. A lot of wolves out there. And they sound good. They look good. And they're receiving meaning. So the only way we're going to find out is us searching the scriptures. That is so important for us. So we can know what God has for us. What he says in the scriptures. It doesn't say go look for the man who has all the kind of the degrees in his name. Or has the title of even pastor. Because there's a lot of pastors out there, like I said, they're wolves. He said search the scriptures. He didn't say go search for a man. He said search the scriptures. He's telling us. If preachers and teachers would, just, would read the scriptures, listen to me. If preachers and teachers would teach the scriptures, I mean all of it, we wouldn't have lost people sitting in church. Either they'd get saved or they would run. Because who doesn't want to hear this? The devil. The devil doesn't want to hear the word of God. He runs from the word of God. So if preachers were preaching the word and not none of this positive thinking. So many preachers are like, I don't want to offend anybody. Well, guess what? The Lord offends me all the time I read this thing because I'm making I I need to learn these things. There's things I'm doing, I'm like, Yeah, it steps on my toes, but I say, Thank you, Lord, thank you for showing me that this was wrong what I was doing or thinking. So yes, the scriptures are gonna step on our toes. The scripture there's a neck Positive thinking, this is, that's not where it's at. People, preachers don't, don't preach going to hell. There's a lot of stuff they don't preach because they don't want to offend the people. I'm not here to satisfy you. I'm here to satisfy the Lord. And by satisfying the Lord, He wants me to tell you everything. He wants me to give you the whole counsel of His words. And if this is the only thing I can get, this small little guy right here, is this is all I can get? Well, I'd rather have this than not preach the word and have a big church. You understand? That's why I believe that a man of God will not have a big popular church. Because we're not a popular people. Big popular churches, I'm are men who are preaching to satisfy the people. Because you preach the Word of God, I'm telling you, if you preach the Word of God, 
The word offends. It offends and we need and we need to be happy about it though. We need to say thank you, Lord, for showing me this stuff. People get offended and they say, Well, I'm not going back to that church. We have that all the time. We have so many people who are church hopping. It's very popular, church hopping. We need to get away from that. Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The scriptures show the word of God on how we should live. Right here plainly says, Thy word, the scriptures, is a lamp unto my feet. He shows us how to walk. Day by day, he shows us how to walk. And a light onto my path. So where you're walking, there's going to be a light there. If you're walking with the Lord, there's going to be a light there. Because the Lord's there. He's Because you're following Him. If there's not a light there, if it's darkness, guess what? He's not your lamp. You're following something else. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on Him. Who believed on Him. Do we have believers in here? Then Jesus said to those Jews, which He was speaking to the Jews this time, but He's speaking to everyone. If ye continue in My Word, continue, then you are My disciples indeed. If you continue, same thing, are you you searching the Scriptures? If ye continue, He's talking about you. If you continue in my word. So that's, that means we need to study the word of God. Not just teachers and preachers. We all need to do it. Like I said, what I'm doing here, it's, it's normal. This is what Christians are supposed to do. What I'm doing, I don't have no special ability here. I go in my room, I study, and I pray that the Holy Spirit opens my eyes. And He does. But we're all supposed to do that. Do you hear what I'm saying? We're all supposed to be like... I'm not saying me like, look at me. I'm just saying we all should be searching the Scriptures. We all should continue in His Word. We got time for TV. We got time to go out and do other things. But Christians don't have time to continue in His Word, to search the Scriptures. Like I said, we're too lazy and we depend on a man to tell us what the Bible says. Verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth will make you free. Well, guess what? Because we're not staying in the Word of God, because we're not searching the Scriptures, I see a lot of defeated Christians out there. Because they're not continuing in His Word. Because they're not searching the Scriptures. And they're having a defeated life. They're not set free. Because they don't know what the Word of God says to be set free. And the reason is in verse 31. Like I just said, they continued in His Word. Searching the Scriptures. You want to be set free? Whatever it is, whatever comes your way in life, you want to be set free of it? Search the Scriptures. The God, God, the Lord has everything, all the answers right here in the, in the Word, in the Bible. He has all the answers right here. We do not have to go to no psychiatrist. The answers are here. Search the scriptures. Continue in his word. We as Christians, if we don't do that, we are not set free. I'm telling you right now, you are not set free. Because you're not studying the word of God. And you don't know how to be set free. And don't depend on a man. We're going to see that the Old Testament, Old Testament brings us comfort today. The Old Testament. In Romans Fifteen four. For whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. First Corinthians ten eleven. Now what all. Aforetime mean before. Yeah, it's meaning about the Old Testament. That's what we're going to be studying on. That scripture up there sounds like just sums it up. <laughs> there's, I mean, you know, if there's just one verse, I just need one verse. To show me something. But God knows us. Yeah. <laughs> he knows we need to be shown several times before we see it. But for First uh, Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for an example. And they were written for our ad, admonition. 
upon whom the ends of the world are come. It's talking about what happened to the Jews here. They were given to us an example. The Jews that were in the wilderness, when God took them out of Egypt, and they went into the wilderness for 40 years, they stayed there that long because they disobeyed God. And then they stayed another 40 years for disobeying even more, but I'm not going to get into all that. But they were given to us as an example. They were given to us as a warning to us, this is what's going to happen to you when you don't obey God. It says it right here. Those in old, those back then, we look at that and that is our warning. We need to know what's in the Old Testament. So we know, well, what was the warning? I mean, why, why did the Lord do this? Well, if you read the Old Testament, you'll know why the Lord uh, let them in the wilderness for 40 years. We wouldn't know this if we didn't read the Old Testament. It is written to be a warning to us. The New Testament is about the Old Testament. We cannot, if you, if you just, if there was a book, and there are, that says just New Testament on it, and you pick up that book, just New Testament, not the whole Bible, O and U, that's the whole Bible. But they sell Bibles that just say New Testament. If you pick up that New Testament, guess what? You're not going to understand it. Because it, it quotes, there's a whole lot of scriptures in the Old Testament and the New Testament that is quoted from the, from the Old Testament. And I'm going to show you more to where, no, this is written in the New Testament. There's no way you can understand it unless you read the Old Testament. And I'm going to show you more scriptures like that. But you, we need the Old Testament to understand the New Testament. In Matthew 4, 4, but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every word. Did the Bible say only, only the New Testament was inspired by the Holy Spirit? Is that what it says? Right here it says every word. To me, it didn't separate it, the O from the new. It said every word. This is the words of God. This. Not just the New Testament. It didn't say right here only the New Testament. It says every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The Lord wrote this book, the whole book, the O and the new. He said every word that proceeded out of his mouth. We need. The Lord, God wrote the Old Testament also. And it's being said that we don't need it. That's what I'm doing tonight. We do need it. We are going to see that the way of salvation is the same in the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Lord doesn't change. In fact, Malachi 3, 6, it plain, he plainly says, For I am the Lord, I change not. God said he's the same. He doesn't change. So whatever he said in the Old Testament is still for today. He said, I am the Lord, I change not. Amen? Now let's get an, an example, a biblical example of this. Keep in mind that Romans was written, Romans was written after the resurrection. Okay, Romans, the book of Romans was written after the resurrection. And remember also, that the New Testament doesn't start with Matthews chapter 1, verse 1. Even though, if you go by a book that says New Testament, it starts at Matthews chapter 1, verse 1, right? Well, the New Testament didn't start until after Jesus resurrected. That's when the New Testament started. Because until Jesus died on the cross and gave His blood, we were still under the Old Testament. So the New Testament, the New Testament, up until Jesus did that, everything you read before that in the New Testament is Old Testament. Do you hear me? The New Testament did not start until Jesus gave His blood and resurrected on the cross. That's when the New Testament began. Not at Matthew 1, verse 1. You remember that. Romans is after that. It's after the day of Pentecost also. In Acts 2.38 it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is Romans. What we're getting ready, ready to read is even after that. Romans comes after Acts. Acts chapter 4 verse 2 and 3. 
For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. So what he's saying is not because of his good deeds, Abraham was right with God. Verse 3 he says, For what say the scriptures? What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That's what it said. Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. So if it was counted to him for righteousness, what did that make Abraham? Right with God. Right? Now this is after Acts. Okay? Like I just said, this was after resurrection. Right here in Romans, Abraham believed God, and it was right and, and he was right with God. Does it say that he, he believed and spoke in tongues? And we're talking about after Acts. Acts was already written. This is being said in Romans. Does it say he believed and spoke in tongues? Like some religions say. That you have to speak in tongues. If you had to speak in tongues, it would say right here. To be right with God, you have to believe and speak in, in tongues. But all it says right here is, Abraham believed God and it was counted on to him for righteousness. Did it say believed God and got water baptized? There's some religions out there that say you have to get water baptized. Now speaking in tongues and getting baptized, there's nothing wrong with those. Tongues is a gift of God, from God, but you don't have to speak in tongues to go to be right with God. And you don't have to get water baptized to be right with God. These are things we should do, but this is not what you have to do to get saved. When you put Jesus, accept Jesus, believe in Jesus, and you're weakening who Jesus is. You're showing that Jesus is, can't do it by himself. You're showing that you need Jesus and. There is no and. Tongues, like I said, is a gift from God. If you speak in tongues, amen. If you don't speak in tongues, it's, well, it's, it's the least of the gift. Maybe you have a better gift than speaking in tongues. Water baptism. It's a good thing to do. Jesus got baptized. Water baptized. He said, I do this for an example. So we should get water baptized. But to say we have to get water baptized to go to heaven is wrong. Now, if you get born again, if you really get born again, and you've given your life to the Lord, and you read the Bible and it says that that Jesus got water baptized and we should do this as an example, then if you're really truly born again, you're going to say, hey, I want to get water baptized. But to say that you have to get water baptized to go to heaven? No, right here it says, Abraham believed God. Abraham did what the scripture says in Amos 3.3. 3. Amos 3.3 3. Can two walk together except they be in agreed? How can you walk and walk how can you be right with God if you don't agree with what this says? The Word of God. If you're not in full agreement with what the Word of God says, the Bible, right here it says, how can you walk with Him? Unless you are in agreement with Him. You can't walk with God unless you believe that this is the infallible Word of God, the Bible. And you agree with everything that's written in here. When I got born again, I had made up my mind, I'm going to believe everything that's in this Bible. And I didn't, I, I didn't know what was in it. All I knew is I wanted to live for the Lord and I was going to start reading the Bible. And I had made up my mind, whatever this Bible says, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to accept it. So Abraham believed God. Galatians chapter 3, verse 6 through 9. Again, verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. It says it again in, in Galatians. Now, this word believe... Now listen to me. This word believe, it's a powerful word. <coughs> believe does not mean what we think it means. Just believe. The word believe means we're married to God. Now listen to me. We're married to God. We are His bride. Because in John chapter 3, verse 28 through 30, Ye yourselves bear witness that I said, I ain't am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. This is talking about John the Baptist right here. He, that he wasn't the Christ, that he was sent before Jesus. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. Now who's the bridegroom? He's talking about Jesus. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, 
rejoices greatly because the, bride, the bridegroom's voice, this may joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. Now I'm just using these verses to show that John the Baptist was saying that he was not the Christ, but the bridegroom was coming, which was Jesus. And right here it says, he hath the bride. We are the bride. It's all, it's, it says it a lot in Revelations. We are the bride. In fact, in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8, it says, God divorces Israel, the nation, for having other gods and for not believing in him. But not all Jews, like David and, and Jeremiah, the, the men of the Old Testament, the men of God. It says, God divorced Israel, the nation. Not all the Jews, because we got King David. He was a man of God. So he's not talking about all the Jews. He's talking about the nation. Israel as a nation, remember, they made their own gods. They, didn't, they disobeyed God. And God says, I divorced them. Who do you divorce? If you're divorcing someone, who, you, who you're divorcing? And if God is, is the male, then we must be the female, so we must be the bride. So to be a believer, when you say, I'm a believer, you're saying, I'm a bride of God, of Jesus. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. I am the bride of Jesus. So the word believe is not just, oh, I believe in that. No, the word believe is a whole lot more powerful than that. Just like I'm showing you right here. The word believe, when you say, I believe, you're saying, I am a bride of Jesus. That's what you're saying. We're married. This is the word of God. We are the bride. We are the bride. So the word believe, remember, when people say, I believe, most people don't know what they're saying. And like I've said many times before, hey, the devil believes. The devil believes me more than us because the devil has seen God. He has seen God. We haven't even seen God. The devil has seen God. We're going by faith that there is a God. What was it? Uh, what was the scripture you said? What was talking about uh, divorce and Israel? Uh, Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 8. So when, when it says believe, don't, that's not a small word. Believe is a powerful word. Believe. We belong to Jesus. So you might be asking, you know, well, what did Abraham believe? Jer uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse one, 1 through 3. Now the Lord hath said unto Abraham, Get thee out of the country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land I will show thee. It starts off with the Lord saying to Abraham, He's, he, he's already told Abraham because he says, he says, now the Lord has said, he has already said. So Abraham already knows this. But he said, first he tells him to leave his house, to leave home. But he, the Lord tells him he has to leave home. And the second thing he tells him, he has to leave his family. And the third thing he told him was to go to a land that God will show him. He said, go to a land and I will show you. He didn't tell Abraham all what he was going to do. He just said, leave. And I'll show you. He didn't say, I'm going to... He was showing him then. He said, I'll first leave and I'll show you. So Abraham was just, okay, I'm going. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going. Amen? Amen. Obeying God. <clears throat> Obeying the Lord. Verse 2, And I will make thee a great nation... And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. The earth blesser will come through Abraham. Now who's that? It's who's the Jesus. Jesus. That's who the blesser is. That's where we get our blessings is through the Lord. So he's talking about uh, Jesus here. Now, if you drop down to verse 7, verse 7 says, And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. He says to Abraham, Unto thy seed. Who's the seed? Is he talking about, did he say seeds with an S? If he's talking about, if he puts an S on there, then he's talking about just his family. But he says, unto thy seed. 
Let's see who the seed is. Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity, meaning hostility, between thee, which is the devil. He's talking to the devil here. In Genesis, he's giving out the punishment to the devil. And he says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed, which is the devil, and her seed, which is we're going to see is Jesus. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, I explained this before. But Jesus bruised the head of the devil. Now, but, it, but then it says, And it shall bruise thy head, and, that, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Meaning Jesus. The devil's going to bruise the heel of Jesus. Well, how's the devil going to heal, bruise the heel of Jesus? Well, I explained this before. When Jesus was on the cross, had his hands out. If he didn't put all his weight on his heels, his body would sink. When his body sinks, it closes. It, it, you can't breathe. All right? So Jesus would have to push up with his heels so he could breathe. And that's how it bruised his heels. That's the only thing. You read the Bible all the way through. Up and down, backwards and forth. You can do it any way you want. But that's the only place where it shows that Jesus' heel was bruised. But this was, this was told back in Genesis. That a seed would come. And uh, Gen- in Genesis thirteen fifteen, For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. To thy seed. He's not talking to the Jews here. He said, seed. So he's saying, for all the land which thou seest, to thee would I give it, and to thy seed, meaning Jesus, forever. So we're learning that the seed is Jesus. That's who the seed is. Genesis 17, verses 7 and 8. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations for an everlasting covenant. For everlasting covenant. Everlasting What does everlasting mean? Forever. Forever. It doesn't end. To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art stranger, all the land of Canaan, for everlasting possession, and I will be their God. It's an everlasting covenant. Now if it wasn't, if the Lord's, He changes not, right? It says right here, it's an everlasting covenant. In, in Galatians 3.16, it says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, not to seeds as, as of many, but as of one. Right here it's telling you. He's not talking about seeds. He's talking about a seed, but as of one, one seed, which is Christ. So when, you're, when he's talking about the seed of Abraham, he's talking about Jesus. Now, this is Galatians. What is Galatians? Where's that found? In the Old Testament or New Testament? That's an easy one. <laughs> Galatians is a New Testament. Now in Galatians, the New Testament is talking about Old Testament. And he's telling us right here that there's going to be one seed from Abraham, and that seed is Christ. Now, if we didn't know anything about Abraham because we didn't read the Old Testament, how are we going to understand this verse? So Abraham believed that the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, would come through him. That's what Abraham believed. Because this is what God told him. There will be a seed after you. And this seed is going to be Jesus. And this is what Abraham believed. He believed God when he told him that. Now back to chapter 3 on Galatians Verse 7, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. We have the New Testament telling us that we're just like the Old Testament. <coughs> know ye therefore, this is New Testament I'm reading, Know ye therefore that which they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. And we are the children of Abraham. Romans 4.16, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed. 
not not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Abraham, right here, the, the New Testament says that Abraham is the father of us all. Because that's what God told Abraham. Through your seed, through your bloodline, is going to come to Christ. So Abraham is the father of all of us. Again, if we didn't have the Old Testament, Abraham, who's Abraham? Hmm? People need to read the Old Testament to understand the New Testament. I'm showing you this right here. Because we need to, if we read the New Testament without reading the Old Testament, we're going to be lost. Verse 8, And the Scripture, and the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the Gospel unto Abraham saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. Justified. Let me explain what justified means, just in case we don't know it. God is the judge. Okay, at, at the beginning, God created man and woman. And because we sin, Adam and, Adam and Eve, and I say we, okay, God, in the beginning, created Adam and Eve, Right? And he told them what not to do. Well, they did it. And sin came about. And in Romans 6.23, it says, The wages of sin is death. That's what God says. The wages of sin is death. And that's what Adam and Eve did. And God was judged. And he says, Because you sin, my sentence for sin is death. This is what, and God was right by doing that. Everything God does is perfect. Remember that? So it was only right for him to put that judgment on Adam and Eve. Now, before I go further, let me get off the subject just a little bit here. All right? In Acts 13, verse 38 and 39, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. How many people don't read that right? How many people don't even read this verse? It says, Be it unto you, therefore, men and brethren, talking about Christians, that through this man, who's this man? Jesus. It's talking about Jesus in Acts. It says, Through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Through this man. It's speaking about Jesus here. It's not talking about man like us. It then not say woman. So if you're praying to any kind of man, physical man, or if you're praying to a woman, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. It says, through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Didn't say Mary did it. Didn't say a priest. It didn't say a priest was going to tell you, okay, go say so many help Mary is our fathers and you'll get forgiveness. You know, it says, through this man is preached unto you forgiveness of sin. Through Jesus. Period. That is it. Like I said, if you're doing it any other kind of way, you're wasting your time. And we are guilty. We are guilty of misplacing our loyalty. We are guilty of that. Now, I'm not just going to hit the Catholics here. But did the Southern Baptist Convention die for your sins? Did the Southern Baptist Convention die for your sins? So do you owe the Southern Baptist Convention or the Southern Baptist churches, do you owe them your loyalty? Hmm? You don't. The Southern Baptist Convention did not die for my sins. So why am I going to be loyal to them? It's just a group of another religion. Did the Pope or did Mary die for your sins? So why do people worship them like they did? Why did they pray to them for forgiveness? The Pope or Mary, neither one of them died for our sins. Martin Luther, did he die for our sins? So do we owe the Lutheran church any kind of loyalty? Do we owe any church loyalty? Did any church die for your sins? No. And I can keep going and keep going. What I'm trying to show here, all our loyalty, all of it, goes to Jesus. 
All of it. People don't go. People don't leave the church because well, that's where my m- mama and daddy went, and that's where my grandfather and grandmother went, and, that, and so on and so on. They're loyal to that church. They're more loyal to the church. If they're not, if they're not getting fed, if there's not a man of God in that church, but they stay there, it's because their loyalty is in the church and not the Lord. Do you hear me? Mm-hmm. It's in the church and not the Lord. We have a lot of people that way. A lot of people. We need to realize our loyalty is to Jesus. Period. Period. That's it. I don't go to this church because it's family history. I go to this church for the reason we should go to a church. In fact, I told my pastor that this week. I told him. I said, I don't come here because I'm Baptist. I said, I don't come here because all the people are friendly and nice. And some of them are Christians. I said, I come here because you preach in the Spirit. That's why I come here. I said, if you leave, unless they replace you with a man, another man that's filled with the Spirit, then I'm gone. Because I have no loyalty to this church. I'm going to go where the Spirit is being preached. Someone preaching in the Spirit. That's where I'm going. And I told my pastor that. And he definitely agreed with me. He said, you're right. We need to learn where to put our loyalty. A lot of people don't know. I'm telling you right now, a lot of people are more loyal to the church than they are the Lord. And this is what the scriptures teach. Loyalty to Jesus. Verse 39, And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Now here's some good news. Especially for the Pentecostals. And the reason I say that is because Pentecostals believe you can lose your salvation. Right? They believe you can lose your salvation. If you didn't know that, well, they believe that. Right here, this little word, like I said, every word in the Bible is very has a meaning. It's very important. But right here, and by him all that believe are. Are. Is the word might? Does it say might be justified? No, it's, and by him all that believe are. Are. Meaning you got it. It means you're right with the Lord. Now. You are justified. That's what it means. So if you're justified, if you're right with God, then that you're it. That's it. You made it. You don't lose it. Now, I have a whole teaching on that, but I'm just using this one right now. And let me show you again. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, that after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed. Sealed with the Holy Spirit. Of promise. Amen. Sealed. Which is the earnest of our inheritance. Until the redemption of our per- purchased possession. Unto the praise of his glory. You know. I will just stop right here. And we will just fall on our knees. And praise God. That we are sealed. We are sealed. Who's going to unseal what God's done? Who is Stronger or more powerful than God to unseal us. Right here, it, this is the scriptures. We believe the scriptures, right? It says, "Ye are sealed with the Holy Spirit." What it's saying is, we have a guarantee that we're going to be with Him forever in heaven. This is guarantee. It's sealed because we allowed Him to pay a debt that we owed, and and we couldn't pay it. But He paid that debt. So what? Because He paid it for us, now we belong to Him. Right? He paid our debt, so now we belong to Him. And because of this, we should fall. I'm telling you, we should fall on our knees right now and praise God. We should. I don't know why I'm not doing it. When I'm by myself, I do. Because I'm, I'm reading it. I guess because I'm teaching it. But when I'm here alone... And I read stuff like this, I just have to stop. 
I'm, I mean, if you believe what you're reading and you read this, you can't help but fall down and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you I don't have to depend on me to keep my salvation. He keeps us. Amen? Amen. Did you hear that? We do not have to depend on ourselves to keep our salvation. <laughs> Amen. It says, from all things. Huh? <laughs> it says, from all things. Meaning all sins. From all things. From all sins. And guess what? Even suicide. It's a sin. But God forgives all sins. If you read Hebrews 11, verses 24 through 35, Samson. It's talking about Samson and other great men of God. King David, the prophet Samuel. He's in the list with these great men of God. He's in there. And what did Samson do? For those of you who didn't know, Samson committed suicide. Now, he's lost a lot of rewards in heaven. Because if you, if you kill someone, you're going to lose rewards. That's not God's way. Even though it was himself, he killed himself, it was suicide. But what I'm trying to show here, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people say Samson was lost because he committed suicide. No, it's not. Read Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 35. They put Samson in the same boat with King David, with the prophet Samuel, and others. Twenty-four through thirty-five. Yeah. So Samson was a was a was a was a righteous man. He was a man of God. But I'm just showing you. You know, we need to read the Bible. We need to read the Bible. Again. You know, how would we know this unless we we read, and you know, we read Hebrews. These verses here. I mean, Samson. It doesn't say Samson committed suicide. You wouldn't know that unless you read the Old Testament. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it says that keeping the Ten Commandments, it says, doesn't save you. Which some people, well, a lot of people believe. A lot of believe that the King Ten Commandments save you. That's what saves us, keeping the Ten Commandments. It doesn't save us. Ten Commandments, the Lord gave us the Ten Commandments. Why? To show us that we need Jesus. Who was the only one to be able to keep the Ten Commandments without breaking them? The Lord, Jesus. He was the only one who was able to walk in this earth and not break not one commandment. From the Ten Commandments, He didn't break one. Because if you read the Bible, if you do it even in thought, not just do it, but the Bible says you even think it, you've broke it. So none of us can do that. So those people who are depending on the Ten Commandments to save them, they might as well go ahead and live like the devil because they ain't going nowhere. They ain't going to heaven. Because they ain't keeping the Ten Commandments. We, we look at the Ten Commandments and, and we, okay, these are just some uh, other directions from the Lord to show us what we should and we shouldn't do. Now we are His creation, we are His children, right? God being perfect, like I said, He had to sentence us. He was right to sentence us. But remember, he was judge. He sentenced Adam and Eve. But then God said, you know what? I love you. I judged you. This is your sentence. But guess what? I'm going to get off my throne. God's in heaven. All right? God said, I'm going to get off my throne. Come down and become man. And pay that sin that I've sentenced you to. Did you hear me? I mean, that's how good our God is. God made the sentence, Adam and Eve, because of what you did, the wages of what you did is sin. That's the only way you're going to pay these wages. But God loved us so much, He got off His throne in heaven, came down on earth, this scum earth, this garbage earth, and paid the debt. That's how good our God is. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Have you have you have you have you looked at it that way? Have you ever looked at it that way? Okay, God sentenced me to death, but then He took off the robe of righteousness and came down on earth and became flesh 
so he could pay that debt for me. And now all we have to do is accept it. <laughs> accept him. Amen? Uh, amen? Is our God good or what? <laughs> oh, gosh. Amen. I mean, amen and amen. Our God is great. He is wonderful. Not only, I mean, yes, he sentenced us, but then he came and paid the debt. He paid the debt. He made the sentence, and then he paid it. So those who, who, those who accept this justification, they're not saved yet. We're justified, but saved, we're, we, we're don't, don't get confused now. We're justified, meaning we're, we got it. We're sealed. But once we get to heaven, you know, then we, we have been saved. Now don't get, don't get confused with this. Justified and salvation. It's the same thing, but we're, we are now justified because of what we've done, except in Jesus. He's made us right with Him. And what is He saving us from? From hell. He's saving us from hell. He paid the debt. We couldn't pay it. He paid it. So that's what He's saving us. We're, he is saving us from where He's sending the devil and his demons. He didn't make hell for us. He didn't make hell for Adam and Eve. He told Adam and Eve, hey, this is yours. This earth is yours. I've given it to you. But because they, they disobeyed, just like the devil did, and the demons, now he's saying, well, because y'all did the same thing the devil's doing, disobeying me, I guess I'll just send y'all to the same place. But hell was not made for us. But since we're going to act like the devil, then we're just going to follow him also. You understand? Colossians 2.14 Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us, was, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. He took our sins and destroyed them on the cross. I should have got a couple of amens there. I should have got a couple of amens. He took our sins and destroyed them on the cross. We are being saved by His resurrection, which has given us life. Remember, we were dead. The Bible says we're dead. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we're dead until we accept Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, whew, our sins were destroyed on the cross. Whatever sin you commit, the Lord has destroyed on the cross. You have forgiveness. Now, remember this. It's got to come from the heart. You don't play games with God. That's not. That's something you don't play games with God. You play games with God, and guess what? And if if you're a born again Christian and you play games with the Lord, He's going to chastise you. I guess we'll just stop right there. But y'all, y'all, y'all see. I mean, not only did I show you verses, but also I'm showing. I mean, verses plainly say that the Old Testament was an example for us. Yeah. All right. It plainly says things in there that, that we need the Old Testament. And not only that, is I'm showing you, without the Old Testament, we cannot understand the New Testament. You can't. He's talking about Abraham, what he believed. Well, how do you know what he believed unless you read the Old Testament? Abraham believed. Okay, well, what did he believe? Amen? <laughs> so do we need the Old Testament? So people who say we don't need the Old Testament... I want to sit down with them and I want to read the New Testament with them and I'm going to tell them, well, what does that mean? And when they say, uh, I don't know, then I'll show them, oh, well, you know what? You could know if you read the Old Testament. So people who don't read the Word of God, anybody can come up to them and send them off on some far story land. You know, you know. Over and over, probably a hundred thousand times, maybe not that many, but almost close, I've told us we need to read the scriptures. We need to read the scriptures. So not only, like I said, this teaching, I, I, I said, you know, what about the Old Testament? But I'm also teaching other things here. I'm teaching about our loyalty. I'm teaching about, okay, what is this seed? What is, what, what, who is this seed? Now we know who the seed is. The seed that was coming from Abraham, now we know who it is. Amen?